Welcome to the Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Tal Kshipo. So today we have a special first part of a two-part series in store where we demystify some of the most frequently asked questions about the new office. And I'll explore them even further and offer you some lesser known ninja tips for you to master office. So simply put, I'm Mr. Basic and you're the ninja. Hi. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false? You can lock the track changes function with a password to ensure that changes by all contributors are tracked. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So as we pointed out, I will be doing some of the basic demo pivots. And for the more advanced users out there, Tall will be elaborating on all of those different scenarios. So let's get started. So Joseph Freeland writes, I was able to get Office 365 Home Premium installed on one computer, but don't I get four more copies? How does that work? So let's have a look in terms of what I would do to get additional copies of Office installed. So here I'm logged into my PC, and what I do is I can log into office.com after I've run it one time and I've gotten one installed to work. On any computer that I own then in my house, I can go ahead and sign in to office.com. By doing that, I just type my Microsoft account, and here I've got garage series at outlook.com, I'll enter my password, and then once I do that, you'll see that I get taken into my, uh, my recent documents page, and I can see all the things I've been working on. I can also launch Office On Demand from there, but in the upper right-hand corner, if I click Install Office, I'll see all the different copies of Office I currently have installed, and easily I can just press the Install button there, and it will actually run the installation right from the browser on the additional PCs that I can install too. But Tal, why don't you show us an elabor elaborated view of that with your first ninja tip? Happy to. So uh, let's say that uh, I'm visiting with Jeremy, his parents, and uh, you can see here that uh, we are on his mom's machine. I'm logging into the browser. It's filled with toolbars. Uh, the first tip would be to hit Control-Shift-P, which opens IE in, in, in private browsing mode, which means that anything that you punch in will not be saved, your credentials or documents or anything of the sort. We're signing in on office.com with the credentials, uh, and we're logging into SkyDrive Pro to access a document we want to work on. And let's uh, um, open one of the documents here, and you see that this is a PowerPoint presentation which opens up in the PowerPoint web app. But let's say that uh, we want to use some of the most robust features that are only in the client application, not in the web app. So uh, what we can do is uh, simply you know what, before we do that, let me show you, uh, we'll go into the uh, control panel and I'll show you that Office is actually not installed on this PC. Yet, we're going and say edit in PowerPoint on the desktop and we're offered to trigger Office on Demand. And what happens right now is that uh, PowerPoint and only PowerPoint is being streamed to this PC. You can see that it's uh, uh, downloading that right now. We don't even need to have admin permissions on this PC to use PowerPoint in this uh, temporary manner. We log in using our Office uh, credentials or Microsoft uh, uh, account or Office 365 ID, whichever. And once uh, we log in, uh, you'll see that it's not just PowerPoint that opened up, but actually the file uh, was streamed from SkyDrive Pro, Pro directly to uh, PowerPoint on the desktop. So PowerPoint is now opening up and we can edit the file and uh, make all the changes. And once we are done working and we uh, close PowerPoint, save the file, of course, back to SkyDrive Pro, and uh, close PowerPoint, everything will be removed from the PC, PowerPoint and the file, and any other personally identifiable information. Jeremy? Awesome. So let's have a look at our next uh, frequently asked question that we get. I know a lot of people are probably asking this. Office, it's really bright. Like when you first look at it, for a lot of people who have maybe a darker theme turned on, They'll say the white hurts their eyes. Uh, Alan Shepard writes, can you help? 
we can help Alan actually. We've, we've got a way to change the theme in Office. So what that looks like is basically I'm going to go into the file menu. If I click on account, um, I can choose from light gray or dark gray. If I go back, you'll see that I've got now my document is white, but I've got now light or a dark gray background. The sidebar there is a, is a dark a charcoal gray. And I can also switch it back to white. So I've got very easy uh, capabilities to go from a lighter to a darker theme. So Tall, to elaborate on that, what do you got? Well, one of the cool things about Office and being signed into Office is that um, the certain settings roam with you. So you can see that I'm switching an account now, and we'll discuss uh, in depth the account switching later on. But right now I'm logging in with my credentials uh, into uh, the PC, and you can see, or I should say into Office, and you can see that uh, as I do that, um, the things that uh, changed are the uh, background, uh, the uh, UI theme, the colors, so this is now my office and many other things ro roam with me like uh, the custom dictionary um, and uh, even the apps for Office and SharePoint. Jeremy? Awesome, so that and all your recent documents at your fingertips, but that leads to another question that we get a lot is what's the difference between a Microsoft account and an organizational ID? So we get that from, from Ali McKay. Let's explain what the different account types are. So basically, if I log into here, I've got Word, I'll open up. And right now, I'm on an organizational ID. What I can easily do, though, and I can see all of my, all of my recent documents, I can see the, the, the templates that have been provided to me or I've been working on. When I sign in uh, to a different account, I can easily do that through switch account. And I can also uh, have my own personal account there. And when I did that, you see that my templates changed, my background changed. Uh, and also my recent document list changed. So I can easily switch then with Office in terms of having an organizational ID, my company's ID, into my personal life with my Microsoft account and that ID. Tall, what do you have on your side? Uh, well, uh, one of the benefits of uh, being signed in is that uh, with the right sign-in, the right saving place is associated uh, online. So if you're signed with an Office 365 ID, uh, uh, SharePoint is your default save location, and if you're signed in with the Microsoft account, SkyDrive is your default save location. But what happens if you don't want to switch accounts because you access both throughout the day frequently? Well, you can go into accounts and add another storage service. So in this case, I'm logged in already with my organizational account, and I'm adding my SkyDrive, my personal SkyDrive account, so to associate both. So I'm logging in with my credentials, I'm uh, uh, including my Microsoft account as well as my password. And once I do that, you can see that Office adds this service uh, that allows me to uh, now also save to SkyDrive. And we already mentioned that one of the things that roam with your, your most recently used documents, and you can see that in this case, we have a mix between my uh, organizational recently used documents and my personal recently used documents because I joined these accounts together. Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Tal. So one other ninja tip related to that is if you're an IT pro, you can actually block sign in with a SkyDrive consumer account so that you don't use those personal IDs if you need to block that for security reasons. So let's have a look at our next frequently asked question. This one submitted by Christopher Bedillo. I just installed Outlook, but I want to use my existing email account along with my Office 365 account. Please help. So you can do that. You can add multiple accounts to Outlook. You pretty much always could do that. But just to show how that works, here I'm logged in. I'm going to uh, click on File and Add Account. And basically, that's going to prompt me for a, a way to add an additional account uh, through Auto Account Setup. And that's I'm going to enter my name. In this case, I'll enter Tal's name, uh, Tal's email address, and his password. He's given it to me. Uh, so then I can log in and get that additional mailbox. When I click Next, it's going to do an auto discover against uh, Exchange or, or Outlook.com in this case and add that additional email account. So I've got now two email accounts in operation from the same installation of Outlook. So to expand on that, what do you got, Tal? Well, let's say that you joined another account into Outlook, um, and you can see that uh, in this case, I have both my uh, work and personal account. And when I go to the calendar, I can actually see both calendars side by side. Uh, you can uh, make uh, uh, any of them go away simply by um, checking it uh, uh, on or off. 
Uh, but the neat thing is that you can actually merge both calendars and ensure that you see uh, everything on one calendar, both your uh, work uh, meetings as well as your personal meetings. Jeremy? Right, so another question that we have uh, frequently is, my boss sends me a lot of emails, mine does as well. Um, because of that, it's hard to find specific things. So you're probably doing a sort by person or sender, and then within that, you're looking at uh, some of the emails that they've sent you. Is there an easier way? Well, indeed there is, Wilma. Uh, basically, we can go into Outlook, and if, you, if you're not using the shortcuts in terms of search, you can do that with a from colon Sarah. In this case, Sarah is my boss. And I can see everything that Sarah sends without looking at all of the other predecessors alphabetically to Sarah and after Sarah and really trim down that mailbox. So what do you have on the Ninja side, Tal? One of the neat features in Outlook uh, is the search folders. So uh, let's see how it works. Uh, you can see here that I can right click on the search folder and create a new one. And I can define the uh, criteria for the search. In this case, I'm choosing mail from and to a specific sender. And I can enter Sarah's name and uh, even resolve it against the uh, uh, contacts. And once I do, you can see that a folder was created. And not only all the emails from and to Sarah that are already in my inbox are there, but any future emails that will come from Sarah or that I will send to Sarah will also appear in this search folder. So it's dynamic and constantly updating. Jeremy? Thanks, Tal. So Jacqueline writes, I've got so many notes in OneNote. Is there an easier way to find what I'm looking for? That's a philosophical question, Jacqueline, but we think we can help. So I've, I've got here Tal's notebook, and he's got several tabs. He's also got several pages uh, within those various tabs. So in terms of making a search, I can go into the uh, search field, and I can pin the search results. And when I do that, I'll see everything with the search term that I've put in brand. Now that's going to um, show me what I need to see, proposal highlights, and it will also highlight all the terms brand within that proposal. So very easily I was able to search across all the different notes I had as well as all the different pages within OneNote using a very simple search rather than going through the tabs individually and trying to find them. So Tal, what do you got? The, the search in OneNote is actually very powerful and uh, as you can see as I go through the search results, uh, you can see that uh, it identified the particular search term brand also in an image as well as um, in ink, which means that I can very easily uh, find anything that I want, even if it's not something that I literally typed in OneNote. Jeremy? Right, so you can even search ink, which is super cool. So we've covered a lot of ground. But before we wrap up today's first part of a two-part series with Ninja Tips, let's have a look at today's trivia answer. True or false? You can lock the track changes function with a password to ensure that changes by all contributors are tracked. So of course the answer was true. Yeah, as we just saw, when you track changes in Word, you can lock the tracking by applying a password and ensure that as long as you do not share this password, the document returns back to you with all changes clearly marked. Right, so we've answered a lot of questions with today's show. This is first of two-part series in terms of demystifying some of the most frequently asked questions of Office. But we have a lot more to come, right, Mr. Ninja? Aye. Right. So be sure to check out the blog at Microsoft.com garage. We'll see you next time.